Hello, math makers. Thank you for joining me again today. Um, you're making math easier just by showing up, and I appreciate you being here. Today, we're going to look again at subtracting using compensation. After a lesson with my class um, this week on this, there were a few things I felt like we needed to add to this lesson. So I'm going to go over a few of these again just for practice. And then at the very end, I'm going to go over a couple of things that I think will make this easier. Um, Mark, you may actually want to watch lesson two before lesson one, but you've probably already seen lesson one. So let's go ahead and go through this. Again, I want to start with, I want to remind you that we want to start using our mathematician language because if we're going to be doing math, then we need to know the language of math. So for subtraction, the big three terms I want us to remember, menu end, that's the bigger number, subtrahend, that's the smaller number, it's what we're subtracting, and difference, that's the answer. And it's called the difference is because it's the difference between these two numbers. So if you hear me using those words, that's what I'm talking about. Menu end, the bigger number, subtrahend, the smaller number, the one I'm subtracting, Difference is the answer. So let's get started. Again, I'm going to go over both ways to use addition when using compensation. I'm going to go over both ways of using subtraction. Um, and I'm going to do both addition ways with the same problem so you can see how it gets the same answer, so you can see how they are very similar. So let's get started. <clears throat> so the first thing we're going to do is 72 minus 26. And of course, it's easier to subtract by tens. So we want to take this 26 to the closest 10. And the two tens that we have are 20 and 30. And 26 is closer to 30. So we're going to add to that to create a 30. And to add to that, we're going to add, let's see, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30. We're going to add 4. So when we add 4 to that, it makes... Set, it changes that 26 into a 30. But with compensation, you just can't add it once because then it gets unbalanced and you have to have balance when you're doing compensation. It what's what keep the answers right. So if I add four once, I need to add four twice. So I'm gonna add it up here to the menu end. And I'm gonna add four to that number and now 72 becomes 76. By adding 4 to both those numbers, it does not change the answer. I want to be clear on that to make sure we understand that it does not change the answer. Um, so, but now I have an easier number to subtract, 76 minus 30. And I tell my class to think about that hundreds chart that we've looked at <clears throat> so many times this year. So we're going to move up the hundreds chart three times because there's three tens and 30. So if I think about that, I'm going to jump up three times. So I have 76, <clears throat> again, three jumps, 66, 56, 46. So 76 minus 30 is 46, which means <clears throat> 72 minus 26 equals 46. That's one way to do addition. Again, if I'm going to use compensation, I tend to add mine first because I know if I wait to the end, I'm probably going to forget. And if I make it, if I forget, well, then my answer won't be correct. So again, we're going to add 4 to the subtrahend. We're going to add it to the smaller number because we want to subtract by tens because tens is easier. This is the other way. So instead of adding 4 to both the menu end and the subtrahend, we're going to add it first just to the subtrahend, to the smaller number. And now I'm going to go ahead and subtract. Now again, I'm starting in my hundreds chart. I'm thinking about it in my head. I'm at 72. I'm going to do three jumps because there's three tens in 30. And I'm going to jump up three times from 72 to 62 to 52 to 42. Do you notice how the ones place stays the same every single time? When you go straight up a hundreds chart, the ones place never changes. Now again, at this point in time, we have different answers because we have not added our second four. So we're going to add our second four on this one to the difference. We're going to add it to the answer. And if I add four 
to 42, and we know that we can add up 43, 44, 45, 46. Now we have the same answer. 72 minus 26 equals 46. So that's how you use addition for compensation. You can add it to the menu end and the subtrahend at the very beginning, or you can add it to the subtrahend and the difference. Both ways work. Both ways are correct. You just need to find a way that works best for you. Now, we can also use subtraction to, uh, for compensation. Now, we have a new question, 37 minus 13. Now, 13, we have two tens. We have 10 and 20. Those are the two tens on either side of 13. And 13 is closer to 10. So we're going to get closer to that 10. And to get 13 to 10, we have to subtract. And we have to subtract 3. We know that because there's a 3 in the 1's place. So we're going to subtract 3. And 13 minus 3 is 10. We still have 37. And again, we're out of balance. So it's not full compensation yet because we've only subtracted once. So we're going to subtract 3 from the subtrahend, from the large, I mean from the menu end, from the larger number. And 37 minus 3, again, you can do three fingers if you need to. 37, we start with 37 in our head. We go 36, 35, 34. So we know that is correct. Now, I have 34 minus 10. I only have one 10 to move up, so I'm starting at 34. I'm doing one jump. 24. I bet you already knew that. So if 24 is what I get there, then we know that the answer, 37 minus 13, is also 24. Now, let's do it the other way. We're going to subtract 3 from the subtrahend first, just like we did here. It's still going to get us 10, but we're not going to subtract 10 here yet from our uh, menu end because we want to, we're going to do it on the difference. So let's go ahead and subtract. Let's do a 10 jump. 37, one 10 jump is... Did you say 27? I bet you did. And if you did, you were correct. But again, we've only subtracted once, so we need to do it twice, so it's full compensation. And when we do, we have 27 minus 3. Again, I can count backwards. Put 27 in my head. Start counting backwards. 26, 25, 24. And so I still get the same answer. 37 minus 13 is 24. Now, that's both ways to compensate, using addition and using subtraction. The big thing to remember, whether you use addition or subtraction, is you have to do it twice. And not to the same number, but to different numbers. So let's go over some things. Here was one of the big questions my students asked me. How do you choose add or subtract? I don't know what to do. So here's the big clue. First, you're going to look at the subtrahend, the smaller number, the number you're subtracting, and you're going to look at the ones place. That ones place tells us a lot in a lot of questions. And if the number in the ones place is a one, two, three, or four, we subtract. If the number is a five, six, seven, eight, or nine, we add. <clears throat> so look at the number 27. There's a seven in the ones place. So, according to this number line, if there's a 7 in the 1's place, what do I do? Find the 7, it says to add, because I would just need to add a few more to get to 30. And I would add, how much would I add? 28, 29, 30. I would add 3. Um, and so that's how I do that one. Let's practice a couple. We're going to practice maybe 3 of these just because of time. So, 53. Hmm, what do I do? Do I add or subtract? Look at the number line. Find the 3. We subtract. That's right. And so we only have to subtract 3. Now, how do I know 3? I can go to 3. I want to get to the 0. And I have 1, 2, 3 jumps. Very good. Let's try a couple more. 49. What do I do? Add or subtract? 
Which one do I do? Find the 9. That's correct. Did you say add? You're right. How much do I add? We're getting to the next 10. We just have to do one jump. One more. 32. What am I going to do? Add or subtract? Did you find the 2? It's right here. So what do I do? Subtract. That's right. How much do I subtract? 1, 2. Again, 2 in the 1's place. Now the next thing that some of my students had issues and questions about was jumping those jumps of 10. So when I get that 10, that 10's number, in the subtrahem, how do I move? How do I figure out what the answer is? Well, let's practice a couple. Again, just for time, 87 minus 30. When we subtract by 10's, we move up a 100's chart in a straight line. We're going straight up, and you can see that. It always goes up 10. So if I have 87 minus 30, in my head, I'm going to start at 87, and I'm going to do three jumps because there's three tens in 30. And I'm going to go one, two, three. And I'm going to land on 57, which means that 87 minus 30 is 57. Let's try another one. 55 minus 20. Now, again, remember, when we move up by tens, we move up the hundreds chart in a straight line. <clears throat> How many jumps are we going to do this time? Look at the 20. 10, 20. Two jumps. So I'm going to start at 55. Two jumps. One, two. I land on 35, which means 55 minus 20 is 35. Very good. Now, I want to do a couple without a hundreds chart. Let's think about it in our brains. 85 minus 10, I'm starting easy. 85, 110, one jump. Did you say 75? You're correct. Let's do a couple more. I'm about to run out of time and I don't want to go too long. 68 minus 40, how many jumps? Four, 10, 20, 30, 40. So I'm going to start at 68, I'm going to go up four times, 58, 48, 38, 28. All right, guys, last one. 97 minus 30. How many jumps? How many tens are there? 10, 20, 30, 3, so there's three jumps. 97, let's do our three jumps. 87, 77, 67. Is it getting a little bit easier? I hope so. Math makers, thank you for making math easier for yourself today. I appreciate you being here with me, and we will see you next time. And I hope that you are starting to enjoy math a little bit more.